Hi, good evening. Welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Titus Preville this evening, sitting in with two guests who are going to, over the next 30 minutes, discuss an issue of putting an end to regional trade. That is what is commonly referred to as Article 164. Now, in the revised Treaty of Shagaramas, establishing the Caribbean community, um, chapter 7 of that treaty makes provisions, special provisions, for what is referred to as disadvantaged countries, regions, and sectors. And within that uh, uh, chapter, there are articles. And one of the critical articles in there is what is referred to as Article 164. Article 164 essentially is a special set of arrangements that allow the LDCs of CARICOM to get particular advantages for certain industries for certain periods of time so as to allow those industries to grow. COTED has approved a third round of Article 164 and to discuss this, this uh, third round this evening, I have in the studio two persons, Dr. Thomas Samuel, who is the Director of Trade in the Ministry of Commerce, and Mrs. Paula James, who is the executive director of the Senusha Manufacturers Association. Thank you very much for, mm -hmm. for accepting the invitation from the Government Information Service to be here. Dr. Samuel, Ms. James. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Samuel, Article 164. We hear a lot about this. Um, we know it is a provision in the revised treaty. Mm -hmm. um, we understand that it is the third round of Article 164 will commence come the 1st of January yes. uh, 2020. Yep. For the purpose of the listeners out there, now, no more than two minutes, give us the context in which Article 164 is being rolled out a third time. Uh, <coughs> good morning, uh, viewers, and thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, you have um, summed it up quite well in your opening uh, statement. Um, the Article 164 regime is, is part of, what, as you indicated, the Chapter 7 of the treaty, but it's really um, what I call an innovative and creative uh, um, provision in the treaty that uh, recognizes that the countries that make up uh, the CSME or the CARICOM integration arrangement are not all of the same level of development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the aspirations and objectives that we have set for ourselves within with regarding CSME and regional integration, it was felt that it is necessary to provide some compensating arrangements, some kind of uh, provisions that give the less uh, capable, for want of a better word, or mm -hmm. disadvantaged uh, countries, some assistance to better compete, and there, thereby uh, helping for bet to en ensure more uh, better distribution of the benefits of regional integration. Mm -hmm. So that is essentially the broader context in which Article 164. Now it's just a goods-only regime. Right. Um, uh, a lot of our treaty, um, when it started, basically looked more um, tangible trade. Traded goods. Um, yes. Trading goods. Um, over time, and as I've, I, I wouldn't have <laughs> argued elsewhere, we will also have to look at similar arrangements for services. But on this occasion, it's really about goods. Um, the, 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 the chapeau, or if you like, the, the title of this, this initiative is really, our objective is production, uh, industrial development, promotion of industrial Street development. Right. So this is really what um, Article 164 tries to do, to make sure that LDCs can participate in intra-regional trade, um, but they need some assistance, and this is what Article 164 tries to do. Okay. Ms. James, um You've been one of the persons speaking on Article 164 and its need um, for your members and even uh, um, um, firms that are not your members but will also be beneficiaries from Article 164. From the firm perspective, what is it that they see as the opportunity for them, 
from the regime? Um, Article 164. Um, from a business perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of the members are still struggling with the high cost to produce an item. Mm -hmm. And um, competing with the MDCs, which is the bigger ones, some of them have oil, they have the capacity, they have everything, f shipping, everything. It becomes harder for the all manufacturers to compete. So Article 164 gives them an opportunity to try and put some more systems in place whereby it will help reduce their costs. And from the first round of the implementation of Article 164, shipping has been a, an issue, an area that we have been trying to address. To get something from here to get to Antigua, you may have to make a round depending on what it is, send it all to Miami, and then it comes back down to Antigua. So that in itself throws your cost way above a normal person that will have something that is much bigger and the, the manufacturing cost is cheaper to deal with. But for us, it is something that is hard. So the, it, Article 160 is only giving them a, an opportunity yeah. to enhance and put systems in place so that they can help their product to come a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. than the bigger countries. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to you, Dr. Samuel. We talk of Article 164 and rates. Um, give me a clear sense as to what the regime will do? Um, is it a regime for the entire universe of goods, uh, a subset of goods? Hmm. And if so, um, um, give me a sense as to how the, the regime um, departs from the normal arrangements within CARICOM in terms of free movement of goods. Right. Um, as you know, in an integration arrangement, um, we have a, what they call a, a sort of mature, uh, a high level of integration. Integration at its most basic level starts at a free trade agreement. And then after you have something called a common market, a customs union and then a common market. Mm -hmm. And after that you have uh, the notion of economic union as we have in the OECS. So at the level of a common market, you have something called a common external tariff which basically says that the countries in that arrangement have a common treatment of goods coming from outside of that space. And the, the corollary also is that all the member trade within that space is at zero tariffs. Mm -hmm. So that's the normal treatment. So mm -hmm. if a good originates from any part of that space, whether MDC or LDC, whether say Jamaica to, to Antigua, Trinidad to Grenada, it does not matter, the treatment is zero tariffs. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's one of the benefits. So it's a preferential space for the members within. Mm -hmm. But recognizing that, as I indicated earlier, on, the disparities or the differences between the members themselves, we have some sort of a structure, a dichotomy really, of LDCs and yeah. MDCs. And Recognizing that the LDCs, for reasons of size, scale of operation, as um, um, Paula indicated, cost of production and other constraints, um, we need some kind of mechanism to, to, as I said, act to ensure that the trade is consistent with the aspirations of the region, which is a sort of everyone benefits, a win-win proposition. Mm -hmm. And so um, Article 164 allows us to break away or derogate or move away from the normal treatment and actually apply a tariff on a good from within the space. Okay. So to, if I should go further, so if a good on that list comes from an MDC, it would uh, attract a tariff. And in our case, we, the, product, the, the regime covers 39 tariff lines or 14 product groups. Okay. And these groups or these products are products that the beneficiary countries or LDCs have the capacity, capacity to. to produce or existing production mm -hmm. um, capacity, capability. capability. Okay. Uh, uh, you, I want you to keep your thoughts on that. I'm being told we need to go to a break at this point. We'll take the break and then when we come back, we'll continue your examination of the regime it, itself and how it is actually going to work. Okay. We'll be back in a moment. 
Mobile number portability is here. True Choice. Change your service provider and still keep your current mobile number. True Convenience. No hassle of advising personal and professional contacts of new numbers. True Value. Mobile number portability is free. It's your number. Keep it. Visit NTRC or Actel's website for more information. Yeah, welcome back to Issues and Answers. As you know, it's a production of the Government Information Service. And this evening, we're having a discussion on Article 164, uh, a measure, um, a CARICOM measure um, aimed at benefiting the LDCs of CARICOM um, for a specific period of time. Before the break, Dr. Samed, you are looking at the actual um, working of the Article 164 regime, and you, sp and you clearly explain that the, the, the small group of items, 39 yes. tariff heads, 14 um, product categories or right. industries, yes. um, that the LDCs of CARICOM will be free to produce these goods, yes. and these goods would be exported to other MDCs without any duties. Right. Um, and if these very goods were to be imported from the MDCs into the LDCs, there would be a tariff applied to them, Correct. which is not the norm in a common, uh, Correct. In a, in a common union. In yes. a, Common market. In the common market. The question that arises is trade among the LDCs themselves yeah. in those specific goods. Yes. Will there be any duties applied? Well, the short answer is no. Okay. Um, because it, they would be consistent with what we call community treatment or community origin. Mm -hmm. As long as a good moves between a member states, normally, mm -hmm. Is zero. Even um, in the absence of Article 164, the same would apply even for an MDC. Mm -hmm. But we are moving away from the normal community treatment in the case of the, the Article 164 regime, the products covered there, the 14 mm -hmm. product groups or categories you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, to give, uh, as we indicated, the LDC firms, the firms in the LDCs, that competitive advantage space. and space mm -hmm. um, in terms of tariff protection. Okay. Would prices rise? as a result of Article 164, okay. and it's from a, a consumer perspective? The short answer is not necessarily. It really depends on the, the origin of the product. If the consumer buys a, subs a product from, well, well locally, then, uh, or from an LEC, there would be no increase in price. There should not be. Mm -hmm. um, if they choose to keep their preferences as far as the, uh, the brands that they, they, they have been consuming. And if these brands originate from an MDC, mm -hmm. there is likely to be an increase in price. Because remember, the object of this thing, the objective of this arrangement is to actually increase trade and production in the LDCs. Yes. So it stands to reason that um, the, the, the MDC uh, product would be affected. And we are trying to promote a shift. Yes. And if the product is coming from a third country, it's it, automatically it's, Yes. If it's coming from outside the region, right. it um, would uh, face a much higher tariff. I want to also add, um, um, Titus, that in the structuring, in, in um, uh, setting up the, the tariff rates that apply between MDCs, and the rest of the world, care and attention was uh, paid to ensure that the margin of tariff, in other words, the wedge between a uh, good from outside the region and the MDC is the same with what existed before. With the normal CET. Which is the CET. Yeah. So if before the arrangement, the, the, the tariff was 20%, the CET was 20% mm -hmm. or 30%, that will be the gap or the wedge between the good coming from outside the region and an MDC. So in other words, MDCs are not affected by the by the Article 164 right. relative to goods from outside, substitutes from outside the region. Gotcha. So that's important. The Article 164 and what we've spoken about so far has focused attention on the duties, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the mm -hmm. new duties yeah. that, that will be applied on goods that are Article 164 mm -hmm. and that are going to be traded either with CARICOM or come from CARICOM into our jurisdiction or from a third country into uh, uh, LDC jurisdiction. Yeah. But I gather that, and Ms. James made that point very early, that apart from the duties, there are other factors that can impact the trade of goods or trade in goods among ourselves. Are there other arrangements in place to support 
uh, or buttress the, the regime, the, 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 the tariff regime itself? Yes, yeah, certainly there is. Um, actually, in the, in the, the treaty, in, um, uh, Article 164, um, Paragraph 2 in particular, speaks to a set of what they call a company measures, which mm -hmm. really is a set of support measures that are uh, necessary to supplement the first uh, the impact or the effects of, of the price effects of, um, caused um, by the tariff uh, component. Uh, and that includes um, basically a number of firm specific challenges or constraints, mm -hmm. uh, which can be, um, for example, standards. Um, a company may uh, have a difficulty meeting a standard to enter a market. So that will be where we can direct some uh, support we can, it can be an issue, as she indicated, of a logistic challenge mm -hmm. in terms of shipping. Mm -hmm. Shipping may be the main problem in actually being competitive in trying to get to a particular regional market. Mm -hmm. So that is another area that will be brought to attention of, of a regional, the relevant regional uh, body. So standards, for instance, standards would go to, refer to, to cross queue. Cross queue. Mm -hmm. Right. Now we have, for example, there might be scale issues. Um, the, the, the company may need to upgrade um, its plant, maybe to have a bigger plant that has higher throughput and is more efficient, mm -hmm. and it may need some resources to, 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 to help with a plant upgrade. That kind of proposal might um, find its way to uh, the CDF or, the or Caribbean, Caribbean export. Oh, yes, All right. Yes. The issue. So we have a number of regional bodies that will play a role in helping to um, ensure a more successful Article 164. So uh, I could tell you, um, the OECS um, Commission, uh, through the ex um, Competitive Business Unit, which is based in Dominica. Um, has been doing some work um, to sort of get us uh, assess or um, get an indication of what are the needs of the various Article 164 beneficiary firms. Okay. Um, in, for, in St. Lucia's case, we are going to be conducting our own needs assessment where we prepare a diagnostic um, survey instrument which would be circulated to the firms where they would indicate to us. They would what tell us needs. what are their needs. Mm -hmm. And having received that information, we would then uh, be able to say, if we have, for example, 40 uh, beneficiary firms, we would be able to rank and prioritize and see what uh, are the needs of these firms. We will uh, send this to the OCS Commission and then later on to CARICOM uh, Secretariat. The CARICOM Secretariat will then uh, disseminate or, or these, that information to the relevant regional body, which will now be included in their work program. Mm -hmm. So that is basically the approach we, we, we hope to take so that we can provide support to, en to also ensure that all the agencies are acting in tandem with, with us to ensure that the treaty objectives are, are realized. So this is what um, the accompanying measures of support of phase two component of the Article 164 is all about. Okay. So when I come back from the next break, which is coming up shortly, I want Ms. James to um, talk to you, uh, come to you with respect to the participation of your members, the cooperation, as it were, in um, facilitating the data collection and the monitoring of Article 164. And also, Dr. Samuel, for us to look at some of the um, what you perceive as difficulties or hurdles mm -hmm. that we may have to um, address yes. as we implement Article 164. Um, we're watching Issues and Answers, uh, production of the Government Information Service. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Here's St. Lucia. This is your boy Mark 11 telling all the drivers on the road. Be careful on the roads today and always roll with a designated driver. If you're the driver, drink responsibly. Go and come back home safely. Out. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, Human Services, Gender Relations and this station. Welcome back to the program. Um, we've been speaking and as I said before the break, we were, I wanted to turn to you, Ms. James, to look at the matter of your members and um, their their participation over and above just production um, in terms of making the regime work for them. Dr. Samuel mentioned earlier that uh, a diagnostic would be conducted um, to determine what are some of the constraints that your members have. Um, that's members who are beneficiaries of Article 164. Mm -hmm. um, are your members ready to 
cooperate and provide the information that's necessary. My members were always ready to cooperate from day one. Mm -hmm. We are on the third round of Article 164. Mm -hmm. And we've been saying that something needs to be done with the shipping. Something needs to be, be done with helping them get across the hurdle of the electricity cost. So we are on the third round. And none of these two has happened. So you, you're saying that um, in addition to Article 164, as and the, with their supporting or accompanying measures as explained by Dr. Samuel, the, some of the real challenges are energy costs, mm -hmm. energy. Um, shipping. And shipping. And yeah. um, these two, I don't believe, are front and center in terms of what is contained in the quoted decision on Article 164. Um, Dr. Samuel, how do, how, does, how do you see that playing out? Is it a case where each country on its own now may have to find its own shipping arrangements? What, no, but what before we even go there, there were some things that the MDCs had to put in place um, from the inception of Article 164. So I would like Dr. Samuel to tell us you know, where they are with these things mm -hmm. that they had to put in place. Um, as, as we have argued um, and, and, and at the quoted level, this is, uh, um, the success of Article 164 depends on the uh, in collaboration and, and, and consistent action of a number of parties. Not only the, the firms themselves and the mm -hmm. beneficiary, but the regional organization and in MDCs. Um, I could recall um, as far back as the second edition when we were moving uh, into to, to, the, to start it in 2013, um, that was quoted 35. The 35th quoted outlined a number of support areas, which included at the time um, energy cost and also the shipping constraints. Now that is what they call environmental. It's part of the ecosystem in which um, the, the traders must operate. And that is not something can be done, uh, as you say, at the level of a member state. That is basically a regional response right. and um, an enabling arrangement to ensure that goods can move um, in a timely way up and down the, the, the chain. Do you see any action happening on these? Um, I, I would say yes. Um, there has been some movement, even at the OECS level for sure. The much talked about um, ferry service ferry is one service. that we have, it continues to be um, one that we, we have been working on. And it is my hope that within the lifespan of the current um, Article 164 that we are likely to see um, the commencement of, 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 of probably better um, um, supply of um, in terms of shipping options um, for for traders, um, we also have an, an, another local in agency, a body of the the Ministry of, of Commerce, an affiliate body. Here I refer to the Export Saint Lucia, Export Saint Lucia, okay, uh, Trade Saint Lucia, mm -hmm. um, that I think has done some work and are, are also an ally, if you like, an agency that will also be working to support the efforts of the Saint Lucian. Uh, Article 164 beneficiaries in a number of areas, including engaging uh, at least um, the shippers, or if necessary, um, to facilitate the movement of the goods. But this is an area that is um, of priority, and it is recognized that we need to address these concerns. I want to look at two quick constraints. We have five more minutes in this program, so let's, let's look at uh, a constraint immediately. Is there any obligation? on the part of every other, when, now we've been speaking of MDC and LDCs, well, of course, the LDCs are the less developed countries of CARICOM, and the MDCs are the more developed countries of CARICOM. Right. Is there any obligation in terms of the implementation of the rates mm. that, um, for all members of the LDCs to apply the, the, the relevant duties to every item on the list in their country, in their respective country, or is it <laughs> optional? Um, I, I, I'm not sure if, we, if, if, if this is a correct um, framing of the, 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 the question. Um, what I know is that at the level of, of, of quoted, a decision has been taken regarding the treatment of a subset of tariff lines, and which uh, allows the LDC countries to treat, so treat these tariff lines as a manner, in a manner prescribed in the schedule attached to the decision. Um, it, it, it is the reality that not all 
the products covered in, on the list are produced in all the members. And some members, it would appear, have taken into account consumer considerations in terms of the likely impact on their consumers if um, the, the rates were to be applied on goods that they did not produce. So what I am seeing emerging, and I don't think it's an official position uh, that has been um, decided or, or provided at the quoted, is that while all the rates will be applied eventually across all the member states, in, in, really what's happening is the, the rates, the, the regime seems to be implementing a partial, a partial approach mm -hmm. where um, member states are implementing the rates on the products that they produce. I understand. But, but that has the potential to uh, <laughs> constrain the, the potential market of, say, I, I am a producer in St. Lucia of an item that is covered by Article 164. I expect the duties applicable to that product to be enforced in another LDC member state mm -hmm. so as to give me that protection in that market. Yes. So if I am producing, I am able to export, I have the opportunity to move into another LDC member state with my good entering free, um, and this member state ought to provide me the protection by having that particular good tarified at a particular level. What recourse do I have as a producer? Do, can I go to the CCG and protest? Uh, is that contemplated? <laughs> do you foresee that happening in the, in, in, the, in the implementation of Article 164? A worst case scenario. Um, I, I'm not sure what can happen. I can't tell the future on this one. But what I can say to you is that there is not really a built-in incentive for a producer from an MDC in the first instance right. to want to uh, challenge such a regime because um, they would prefer if the, the rates were not applied on their products. Of course. Because it's essentially a, a sacrifice which they are making mm -hmm. um, in terms of it weakens the competitive uh, the competi competitiveness of their product in the LDC state. Right. Um, in the LDC, uh, among LDCs, perhaps is where th there is likely th this can arise, where maybe uh, a, a producer of a good in one LDC um, is concerned that the rates are not applied in another LDC state and what that means. But they already start with zero, meaning their good is, not, is only affected in so far as to the extent that the LDC imports the same good from outside the region mm -hmm. or from an MDC. Mm -hmm. But if they, the good, for example, you take example flour. Um, flour is not likely to be imported into the LDCs from outside of of the LDCs. There are about at least three. So where we have, so where we have capacity to where we to have produce, capacity to produce, that should not be an issue. That should not be. And then the shipping problem, which is the one we're trying to address, is also one of the reasons why the, regi the regime is less porous. I am being asked to wind up the discussion, Ms. James. I want to come back to you. Your members have the discussion we were having, with Dr. Samuel. Has that been of concern to them? Have they raised that? Well, we had issues with dumping that we had to go to court with. And, um, but then you have the flip side because when you ship something to one of the embassies, they look for every reason, every piece of document to hold your goods on the port. And it can stay on the port for weeks and you keep fighting that battle as an LDC against an MDC. We have had quite a bit of issues with that, asking for documents that he's not a part of. I suspect that I suspect that we will have to have a separate program to discuss <laughs> that one. A bit too, we need to wind up. Um, but Dr. Samuel, Ms. James, thank you very much for your comments on the regime, Article 164. Um, I wish the Ministry of Commerce and the country um, all the best in that and our producers. I wish they would take advantage of that um, provision in the treaty. Mm -hmm. um, to expand the domestic as well as the uh, regional, sub-regional um, market share for those goods. Because after all, Article 164, the items on that list will only be receiving that preferential um, uh, benefit for a limited period of time. Yes, 10 years, ten ten years, in years in for, some, for, some for, for most items except uh, curry powder and, 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 and pasta, pasta, which pasta. will be for five, five years. years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Dr. Samuel. Thank you very much, Ms. James. Um, this has been a production of the Government Information Service. That was a program, Issues and Answers. I'm Titus Preville. Have a good evening.